Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the top mistakes that you can make if you're gonna fix and flip a house. Now, before we get to that, do me a favor, like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so you have andied up, you have found yourself a project, a home that you wanna go vertical on, you've probably got an investor or you've gotten some funds, or maybe you've talked to a hard money lender and now you are going to fix and flip a house amazing so what i want to do is give you a few pointers so you don't make these easy to make rookie mistakes when you're fixing and flipping a house first don't fall in love with your project oh my gosh this is like probably gonna be your biggest problem in fixing and flipping your first house is you're gonna fall in love i fell in love with my first project uh, my sister fell in love with her first project pace fell in love with his first project everybody falls in love with their first project because you romanticize it right you're finally living your dream this is the moment this is your time to like shine you're stepping out you're coming out this is happening you're the man you're the woman you're amazing you're flipping a house House. so why wouldn't you fall in love with the project but here's what happens when you get so emotionally invested in the project you actually blind yourself from making some really important decisions and those decisions are going to be business related and oftentimes you have to remove emotion from very strict business related decisions some of these decisions might be what material choices should we be using how do you keep yourself from over improving or under improving a house that'll lead us to our second and third mistake over improving a house so oftentimes when we are fixing and flipping our first house we love it so much that we want to just do everything in it we want all of the things that we've seen on HGTV or all of the things that you've seen on our flipping show when you do get to watch it or things that you've seen in design magazines that you're absolutely in love with and you have sworn up and down that one day when you have the opportunity to flip a house or when you're doing your own renovation for your own home that you're gonna put this design feature into your home these types of emotional attachments will sink you because these things are so expensive to accomplish oftentimes what ends up happening is you forego good decision-making process where you're saying look um, it's gonna cost us this much money to do this crazy fin wall versus just doing regular drywall and getting this thing done and you might overspend by 10 or 15 or 30 or a hundred thousand dollars because you're making a decision that's based in emotion so don't do that don't over improve your house how do you stop yourself from over improving well first and foremost look at what is selling in the neighborhood where you're doing a renovation look at the finishes look on Zillow see what's pending not what's for sale but what's pending what somebody has actually given an offer on and now that property is in contingent it's contingent because somebody wants to buy it look at the finishes of that house look at what that house has been listed for that'll give you an indication as to where you should be going with respect to your design features another mistake I've seen people make is under improving a house so what they'll do is they'll take a look at or they'll try to do a renovation in a very luxurious neighborhood and they will bring substandard materials to finish that job because they get stuff on sale at you know a, a Home Depot or a floor and decor or whatever store you're buying your things from and they stockpile on materials or they think hey wow this flooring is amazing I put it in my house and it's 99 cents a square foot so let's buy another 2,000 square foot of this crap and we'll put it in our renovation if you are not paying attention to the demographic that you are working in and that's our third mistake not paying attention to the demographic that you are trying to attract to your renovation you are absolutely going to make a mistake and possibly under renovate your house so make sure that you're looking at the comps you make sure you're looking at pendings in the area to see what are the design elements that people are doing here again the third one that I just mentioned was not paying attention to your demographic there are going to be absolute shifts in demographics and what they are trying to accomplish or what they'd like to have in their home from neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood so pay attention do your research and make sure that you are not completely blind to who your customer is going to be and lastly guys one of the biggest and most deadly mistakes that you can make when you're fixing and flipping a house is giving your contractor a design rain or design choice rain and b too large of a deposit you don't understand how horrible it can get when you and your contractor aren't on the same page 
I've been in deals where we trusted a contractor to bring to the table the construction materials for a project. They will give you a price and they'll say, hey, I'll get all of this done at $35,000. I'll even go and buy the material. I'll pick the material. I'll make sure I choose really nice, really nice stuff. Very nice, very nice stuff. Okay, that is a total crock of poop. Don't ever let any contractor ever choose their design choices or choose their materials for your project. Oh my gosh, I have seen the most hideous, 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 hideous things come out of the mind of a contractor, even though they're spending all day doing this work. For whatever reason, it breaks. Their brains break when it comes to them making decisions for that. So never let a contractor choose your materials. And then the last thing, guys, a lot of contractors that I know are running minor Ponzi schemes. Now, I'm not saying that to be a jerk. I'm not saying that to say contractors are bad people. But what I am saying is that they oftentimes aren't organized well enough to manage their finances. So what ends up happening is they're using deposits that they're getting from new customers to finish projects that they're working on now. Don't give your contractor too big of a deposit because they are absolutely funding their last renovation with your money. In fact, try not to ever even give them more than 25% of the job they're working on. Okay, of the job they're working on. So if they're doing flooring today, give them 25% of the flooring today. 25% for material, 25% for labor. That should cover them until you see a good portion of work done at which point you inspect and then give them their next check. If you don't want to lose your money, this is the most important thing to remember. Those deposits will crush you. They will run away with your money. If they're given an opportunity to, and I'm not saying that people are dishonest, okay? I'm just saying that it happens and it happens more often than you would like to admit. Please do yourself a favor and make sure that you're very aware of how much you're giving your contractor and, and what it's for. What job is this money being used for? And inspect that. Go to the project. Make sure that the material was bought, delivered to site. Make sure that those trades are on site very soon after you give that check to that contractor. You're gonna get a lot of red flags early on in a job. If your contractor's unreliable, if they're saying that they're gonna be there on a specific day and time, they don't show up. If they say that they're gonna have material delivered by a specific date and time and it's not there, red flag central. Okay, don't be afraid to cut bait, fire somebody and hire somebody new. You might lose a couple thousand dollars because you've given it to a deposit, but when you chase bad money with good money, it all becomes bad money. Guys, I hope this information helped you guys if you are gonna do a renovation, a fix and flip project. It is so rewarding. You can make a ton of money. You can make all the money in, in a deal if you do this correctly. So pay attention to these pitfalls and go out and knock it out of the park. If you got any value from this, do me a favor, subscribe, and also like this video because A, it makes me feel good, B, my daughter says that I'm cooler when there's more likes on these videos. And when you guys don't like the video, she texts me really mean things. So please help Charisma not make fun of her dad. Like this video, share it, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.